episode 16. So just a little recap of where we left off last time. It's on the ground. We've got the scuttle panel refitted and polished. We've got the wings fitted and polished. We've got uh, the headlights and indicators. They're all installed and working. We've got this bonnet all done. That's all nice and clean, ready to bolt back on again. So today in this episode, what we're going to try and achieve is uh, finish this lights around, get that sanded and painted, the grill sanded and painted, horns connected, bumper sanded and painted again. Um, we will probably do a little bit of wiring messing around here. Might jack it up and replace that broken collar. Move the filter over to here to replace that one and put the sedimenter, God, I can never say that, sedimenter in place. Um, and I think that's about it really. Oh, we'll probably oh, break everything in the process. Probably install the seat box where it needs to go. We need to undo all these bolts here and uh, switch them around because I put the panel on the wrong way around. That was my fault. Probably reinstall the glove box as well. And underneath there, just do a little bit of general wiring and tidying. Um, and I think what we might do is might take the rest of that quarter panel off and that light because I want to repair all the wiring around the back so I'm not happy with that. Um, and we might start working on one of the tailgates or cut some of the rust out. But let's just have a look and see the difference of that paintwork there compared to where it's come from. I do really regret not washing this before I put it in here, but you know, it was just, I was on my own and it was a bit of a nightmare to push it in and out. So yeah, pretty happy with that. We need to clean up the A pillar as well. That'd probably be the next bit. I might actually wash the doors in here and uh, mop those at the same time because I'm, what I'm trying to do is work from the front back and up. To be honest, once the seat base is in and the under dash is in, that's we are done up to that point, part, apart from the carpet, but that won't go in yet. And then we can sort of work back. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep popping along. I'll, um, I'm not really going to do a lot of time lapsing today just because it sometimes just gets a little bit, it, it just fills the videos up a bit and you don't really see what I'm doing. I'd rather just sort of come back at intervals and just explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And maybe just a bit of live video of just me installing parts, but we'll see how it goes. One is on. There we go. Didn't really film doing that. Um, it's quite a struggle. Ended up doing it on my own. Anybody that needs to do that, actually, just put a bit of carpet over each wing, a bit of cardboard across the middle of the engine, lift the bonnet, rest it on it, move the hinges, slide it on, lift it up, bolt it in. Probably took about two minutes. It's probably the easiest bonnet I've ever put on, really, considering the size of it. Um, yeah, it's starting to look really good now. I do really wish that the rest of the... Range Rover looked as good as this front end does. I think we'll all agree that the paintwork is definitely, you know, presentable enough to be uh, used compared to what it did look like. Uh, so the bumper, I sanded that all the way back. That probably took about two hours of my life to get that sanded back. Um, ended up using a mixture of 60 and 80 grit sanding discs and just kept working backwards and forwards with it until all the paint came off. It had uh, various layers of different paint on it. And there was a... Uh, what was there on there? God, it was all black. They were all black. There was silver was the very first color. Then they were all black. Um, and including like a rubberized under seal, which was uh, still soft, which took a lot of scraping. But yeah, came out quite well. I've just given it a coat of Hammerite silver, uh, which is this one here. If anybody wants to copy what I'm using. Um, and it says it can go direct to metal. However, I did prime it as well because there was a couple of imperfections where I'd gouged it that I just used the uh, primer to fill it in a little bit. So uh, we will bolt that on, but before we bolt that on, we need to sort out, uh, the grill is just resting on there at the moment. That can come off now, actually. Um, the reason I put that on there just was because I wanted to take a photo, uh, but we need to take the horns out and uh, I'll just blank those off um, and reconnect the horns up. Uh, I'm not sure there's, uh, oh yeah, no, there's only one terminal on. Yeah, it's just one, it's a single terminal, and then it's uh, through the body. So I'll probably clean that back and put a new connector on there, um, give the wire a clean. Then we can connect the bonnet release cable, might give these bars a little clean, um, and we can also connect stuff like the throttle cable. There should be this plastic apron that needs to go on. I'm gonna go dig out the other one, see how bad it is. If it's serviceable and cleanable, then we'll put it back on there. If not, it looks like Famous 4, but they're about 150 odd quid, so it's not too bad. 
Um, and I think it'll look odd if it's not on there because it just sort of wouldn't look finished. But yeah, we'll just keep cracking along. I'll uh, probably put a time lapse on and we can uh, go from there. all agree that's come out pretty well so uh, that's all the component parts bolted together and now bolted to the Range Rover um, yeah I don't really know why I didn't think it was acceptable to use this I guess it's because all the mounting lugs were broken uh, but what I did is I actually just drilled them out uh, to a larger size so I could fit a bigger bolt with a larger penny washer over them but yeah as you can see it's all gone in looks pretty good um, I mean obviously you won't really see any of that because it'll all be uh, It'll all be hidden, but uh, it's nice that if you look through the grill, you can sort of see it looks like it's been uh, restored to some sort of standard. Um, obviously, I've got the horns in there all connected up now. I've just got to connect the bonnet release cable up, uh, put the headlights around in there, put the bumper on and the grill, um, and uh, that's it. So that's basically the front end fit up done aesthetically. The master cylinder is... That's been taken apart, cleaned and painted. That's over here. There we go. So it's come out pretty nice. Quite happy with the finish on that. That's the underside actually. Let's get rid of that little thing. Yeah, pretty happy with how that's come out. I tried to remove the reservoir, couldn't get it off. I used an impact um, driver with a posi head on it. Still didn't move it. So uh, gave up with that. So just thought I'd mask it off. But yeah, so uh, let's get the bumper on, let's get the bonnet release cable connected, let's get the grill on, um, and then we can tick off that front end, basically. Then I think, I just remembered I need to put a steering damper on. I think I'm going to do all the brake lines now, then we'll jack it up, and uh, we'll crack on with the missing bits and pieces that need doing, such as that uh, shock collar. But yeah, I'll uh, put it on a time lapse. Right, so that's the uh, that's the master cylinder in. Let me just grab that. Oh, there you go. Looks pretty good. I think we'll all agree. Um, I messed around a lot with brake pipes, uh, trying to sort them out. Don't worry, I'm not using the original brake pipes that are on there. This is all just sort of a, a mock-up stage still, so I can just make sure everything sort of goes back together where it should go. Um, so I'm going to order some new uh, Imperial Unions uh, so that I can... Uh, redo all those brake pipes because I'm not happy with the state of any of them basically um, and also we've converted the front end pretty much to metric so it'll all be metric from uh, the calipers back to the uh, whatever valve that is, is it a proportioning valve sounds about right um, so I've done that and it's annoying it's one of those days where I don't really get on with a lot of stuff uh, where it never looks like I've done a lot but I have I've replaced do you remember that collar that was knackered which meant I couldn't uh, bolt on Ooh. Sorry, two secs. I couldn't bolt this bracket on um, because the threads had gone on that, on the uh, turret collar. So I've replaced that. That was uh, not too much of a big job, actually. I was quite surprised. I was expecting that to be a complete and utter nightmare. Uh, here we go. This is the one. Let me just turn that torch off for a sec. This is the, um, this is the collar that was knackered. Uh, I think there you go. Let's try and get some light. Yeah, it wasn't... Uh, wasn't very good. I'll be honest with you, uh, what had happened is um, the top thread, uh, well, the top thread of where you can see up to, that one had actually uh, flattened, buckled, it had done something weird, so the nut was just spinning on that one thread. So I had to get a pair of long nose pliers, put them under the nut and use an impact gun just to keep going and going until it just burnt itself to nothing and just popped off. But that was probably the hardest part of the whole ordeal shame because it was the original collar and i had uh had uh bare metaled it and repainted it but that's going in the scrap bin now sadly i'll tell you what though if you've ever got to do one of those top collars um the easiest way to do it oh sorry camera filming's not very good the easiest way to do it is to remove those four bolts one there one there one there one there one there and then the 
uh, whatever it is, an 18 mil nut at the bottom that holds the shock on. Um, then basically just pull the turret out and then lower the axle down on a jack and then you can slide this out and put a new one in. Um, and I've got a feeling they're actually quite a common fault. I don't know why. Um, sort of making me think that I should be changing the other side now, but I probably won't. Uh, so right, where are we at the moment? So I've basically got to a point where I'm just gonna do a couple of little bits more on the front, uh, such as the steering damper and the steering damper bracket. I'm gonna put that on. Um, and then I'm gonna leave the front end alone. There's still, I need to do brake pipes, um, various other little bits and pieces, um, but I'm gonna just sort of take a step back from the front because I've, I've found that it's just sapping too much of a day up every time. And there's big, well, the rest of the whole car needs doing. So this can be just done as and when I've got a spare hour. Whereas this, you know, when I've got a whole day, I don't want to just be doing niggly little bits and pieces. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the rear light out, disconnect and label all the wiring and take the rear quarter panel off. Um, and then we can start having a dig around this area here that's the rust point. Um, we might even take the tailgate off and the upper tailgate too, um, and just start making a, a job at that really, because it'd be nice to start cutting into it. I might even jack it up and take the shock absorbers off and all the associated parts that need to come off as well. So I'll stick it on a time lapse and you can just watch me. So on first inspections, oh, it doesn't look too bad at the back, apart from the horrific rust that I found on the inside, but um, we're going to have a look at that in a minute. But as you can see, it's pretty solid. I do really, really regret saying at the very beginning of this project, luckily there's not a lot of welding to do because I was completely wrong and there is a ridiculous amount of welding to do, but we are over the hump. Um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it actually. I mean, I know if I started digging around there, I'm sure we could, you know, find some repairs that need doing. Um, but it's solid and I've had a good poke at it from the inside and it's not going anywhere. So I'll probably just clean it back a little bit. Uh, sorry, dress it back a little bit on the inside and uh, reseal it and then it will get painted. Um, looking over this way, sorry, if you can hear some noises, Bruno is here. Wait, go away, go on. Um, yeah, let's go and have a little look and see. Sorry, there's Mr. Nosy over here. Right. Um, so yeah, as you can see, towards the back end, not the greatest, but not the worst either. I mean, we'd seen this, I think we saw this at the very beginning. Um, I'll just grab the camera. So yeah, I've taken the inspection panel. I've just taken the screws out for that in there. Um, obviously it's gonna need, this is interesting. I'll ask Barry about this. I'm sure he'll remember doing it. That's a piece of angled steel and it's really thick gauge steel. So I don't think that's original. I'm sure he'll remember putting that in there. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to cut this section out here because there's a bit of a bad repair there. Cut this off here. Um, and then it will just be the spare wheel well. Looks like the rear cross member's fine. Luckily, because I really don't want to get involved in that at the moment. Oh, let's just try and get the camera in here. So I'm using the tripod today instead of hand filming it because it's a bit more steady. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we've got uh, some rust. Um, that really shouldn't surprise anybody because it is a 1972 Range Rover. And they do like to rust, especially this one is no exception. Um, but based on what, you know, the other kind of ones that I've seen, it's not that bad. Um, looking underneath the seal, it looks all good there. Um, yeah, I'm not too bothered really. I think... I'm going to have a little look and see if you can buy, because I know you can buy the spare wheel well, which I will buy, obviously, and put that in there. And I know you can buy the uh, this part, whatever you call this, this whole thing, the whole thing that goes along the, around the inner arch, the wheel arch there. Um, 
I don't know if you can buy this back section here that has the wheel well in it, because if you can, that would be a massive time saver. And uh, looking at it, I think the easiest route to go is going to be to replace this entire section here, all the way along here to back, and then the wheel well, and then we obviously we'll just make our own lip for the uh, the inner. I don't know really what they, you call these panels, the inner rear wing. Is this the inner rear wing, this thing? We'll repair this base section here ourselves and make a panel for that, no problem. But yeah, I think we'll probably replace this whole section, as I say, and then we'll replace the spare wheel well. Um, because at the end of the day, it's only, you know, it's only spot welds and a couple of seam welds, and um, then obviously it's just pop rivets that, that holds it to the rear floor. So um, it's not a... Horrific job, it looks worse than it does, but I mean, I'd rather do this 10 times over than do on those front floors and A-pillars again, because they're just a complete pain in the butt. Uh, I think we also need the um, mud flap uh, bracket, whatever the thing that's called. Uh, that's rotted away a bit, so we'll have to do something with that. But yeah, overall, looking at it, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. It's, I'm quite surprised how good that is. Um, I'm going to start stripping the back end down. I'm, I'm not looking to get into any welding at the moment anyway. Uh, I just sort of overdid it a bit with the amount of welding I've been doing, um, which knackered me out a lot. And I just hate welding, really, to be honest with you. Uh, got on the other side here. I haven't poked the other side yet. Hopefully you can see all that on the camera. As I say, I'm trying to give you a bit more of a... How? Let me go around the other side. trying to give you a better experience with my filming instead of my hands shaking everywhere um yeah i mean i'm sure it's going to be the exact same story as it is on the uh, passenger side that we just looked at there obviously the rear tailgate is knackered but we have got a choice of two it's not the correct one or the original one anyway it's a, a later one so we don't really want that anyway because we're going for a nice original aesthetic um yeah i mean in there rear cross member looks good i know these Goal posts have been replaced. I know Barry did do those. Um, I'll tell you what, he's actually sent me some photos of some of the work he's done on it back in the early 90s, 2000s. And uh, it's quite interesting. I'm repairing bits that he'd repaired 20, 30 years ago. Um, yeah, so I know we're going to have to... I would, say it's, I would say it's going to be the same scenarios that we've got on that side. Have, we? Have a look. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of rust, 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 not from up north, sorry, yeah. yeah, it's amazing, this paint has made it look amazing, but as soon as you scratch the surface of it, oh there we go, there's a hole around the fuel pillar, that's nice, actually here the chunks are hitting the floor, that's how big they are, obviously use a screwdriver for this, don't use the correct scraper or chisel or anything, because that's what people that work on fancy cars do, not like Range Rover owners. Oh, there we go. That's the little rust hole there. Oh, yeah, there's another one there. To be fair, I don't think that one's a rust hole, Barry. I won't berate you about that one, because I think that's where it's got hot when you've welded it and it's just got quite thin. Which is actually now tempting to a rust hole, so... Yeah. Overall... Oh, yeah. Oh, she's crusty. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, I'm not going to hit that side anymore because I don't want to go home and hang myself now. Um, yeah, it's quite nice that there's a lot of the blue paint left as well. I really like that. Um, I'm going to try and clean, use some thinners to clean some of that off and uh, then I'll paint those wheel ups and other bits because I'd like it all to be blue inside like it should have been. i have to replace that. There's a bit crusty up there. Oh. Luckily, that is incredibly heavy surface rust and has not gone through at all. Yeah, that's not gotten through at all. Good, because I don't really want to get into that section at all. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to have to do both sides. We're going to have to do that passenger side, as you've seen, which is quite bad. I think that's going to be the worst side. Then we're going to have to do the driver's side. Um, but we're not going to tackle this side yet. We'll, we'll do that side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, sheeting and uh, tape it across from the front section back, just because I really don't want to get that side, well, the front full of dust and grime, with all the cutting and grinding I'm gonna to have to do. But uh, yeah, so that's basically, that's the end of this episode. I know I probably didn't achieve a lot. It was more snaggy little bits and pieces that I was doing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're tackling the back end now, so uh, 
more fun to come. And if anybody quite enjoyed the welding, they're certainly going to get their fill of it from watching me do this. Um, yeah, brilliant. I was putting off looking at the back, so uh, now we've looked at it and uh, I can go home and cry myself to sleep. Brilliant. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Um, I will put out a, another video as soon as I start getting panels in. Um, I'm not going to do as much time lapse. I'm still going to do time lapse, uh, but not as much as I have been doing because I just sort of prefer sort of the check-ins and explaining what I've been up to uh, as opposed to you guys just sort of loosely following it on along in the time lapse. But speaking of that, if you have seen, there is another episode that came out I did last night uh, and that was just a one of four part uh, time lapse of the restoration of the Range Rover um, and that was just basically all the time lapse footage from the last 20 odd episodes that I've done um, just as a compilation so you can just sort of sit back and watch it getting done um, but yeah anyway also if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing it really does help the channel grow um, I'm hoping to get to a point where I can get to the monetized section of YouTube which is quite the task apparently as I've been trying to work my way up there but I'm still not that close to it but yeah if you haven't subscribed I'd really appreciate you subscribing if you've ever got any questions or anything or you just want to tell me I've done something wrong, please feel free to comment in the section below or send me an email. Um, yeah, that's it basically. Thanks for watching guys and hope you enjoyed.